If you'd please rise for our gathering hymn. Good morning and welcome. God bless you brave souls for coming out in person and God be with you all at home who are watching via the live stream. I hope everyone is warm and safe and well. Um, it's a joy to be here even on this crisp, very cold Sunday morning and I hope that everybody stays safe and has no slips. We continue our service, of course, with our invocation. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and our refuge, we, we pour, pour out our hearts heart before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for salvation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of god and for the unity of all let us pray to the and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Together, let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace. <laughs> Thank you, Regina. Good to have you here. <laughs> Announcements. Um, of course, no adult forum today. Um, there's not too many of us, so I think we'll give it a shot next Sunday. Thank you so much for coming out, but we're gonna we'll we'll, uh, we'll just pass that off for one more week. Um, we're gonna start a conversation about creation care. So if you are around next Sunday after the service, I hope you can stick around and participate. That would be wonderful. Um, just a, a little correction in the, in the timeline in the back of your bulletins. Family Fine Night is actually this coming Wednesday, not the 24th. So if you are interested, we're going to be ice skating. Hopefully it will be warmer than 7 degrees. Um, but, you know, I guess the ice will be very firm. <laughs> I'm getting like, what am I complaining about, right? I know, I know. Ridiculous. It's like some of us grew up in warmer climes. Um, let's see. But there will be ice skating, and then we'll come back to the church for chili and, and warm food and maybe some cocoa, too. Uh, let's see. Oh, we and we will still be having confirmation afterward. Next Wednesday is going to be busy, but a lot of fun. I hope you can join us. Everybody's welcome, not just the youth. Um, I'll, I'll let, you know, how do you feel about ice skating? I'll let you decide. <laughs> I've got some, some no's, some no's. Some people like their knees too much, I think. All right. Um, otherwise, I don't have a lot of announcements. We'll just continue on with the service. Anything for the good of the congregation? All right. Let's continue. I'll invite my... Oh, he's ready to go. Thank you, Don. Good morning. The first reading is from Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see was lying down in his room. The lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. 
and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And, Lord, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Could I have the children come forward? Thanks, you two. Three, even better. So I want to talk to you about the wasp that was in here last week. Did you guys see the wasp? No. Some extra? You didn't see the wasp? You saw the wasp, right? It attacked you almost. Well, it flew near you anyway. It was here. Did anybody else notice the wasp last week? We saw a few. It was pretty funny. My family started to call it the holy wasp because it was flying around my head while I was preaching. It landed in the baptismal font. It landed on the cross. It was all over the place, right? And it's an odd time of year for a wasp. But nobody got stung, right? So at least it was a nice wasp or tired. I don't know, whatever. It was pretty nice. Anybody else have any close calls with the wasp? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, we'll keep it to it. All right. Uh, so it's interesting that that happened last week and to me this week because we're talking about call stories. I don't know if you guys have ever felt called to do anything. Does that make sense when I say that? You know what it means to feel like you've been called to do something? Have you ever been in a situation, and you're, maybe you're seeing something happen, and you're like, I feel like I should do something, I should help. Have you ever had that feeling? Yeah? Once or twice? Is it, is it a powerful urge? Sometimes, right? You're like, that person needs help, I'm going to go over and help them. Or, or this is not going well, I should do something about that. Or this person got hurt, I should give them a hand, right? Call stories in scripture tend to be, well, sort of like our Samuel story. They can be a little bit dramatic, even though the one for Samuel is kind of quiet and mysterious more than dramatic, right? We get this voice in the night asking Samuel to come, and he does, and he listens, but he has to be sort of trained how to accept that. And for some people, the situation with the wasp, that can feel like God whispering in our ears. God can, can work through nature sometimes and give us a little message and say, hey, are you paying attention? Something is happening. Maybe we wouldn't have noticed otherwise, right? The call that we feel. And in the church, when we talk about call, it's usually a capital C call, right? This is the call. This is God saying to us, hey, I could use some help. Are you willing? 
I mean, that's an important thing to remember. When God calls us, he never says, you must. God says, asks, will you, right? In the New Testament, some, especially in John's gospel, it's, hey, come and see what's going on. God wants us to, to join in, to participate, to, to be involved, and to get involved. And I guess I'm just asking you guys to remain open for those moments of call. You think you can do that? Just listen, maybe, when you might not otherwise. Don't get distracted. Don't say no thanks. Because I'll tell you one thing. When you receive a call from God, and it could be anything, right? It could just be to help a neighbor. It could be to, you know, go into the ministry. It could be to do something important in society. I don't know. God knows, right? But if you are ready and you hear that call, you will be transformed. And so will all the people around you. It's worth giving it a shot. But not everybody answers, and so opportunities are missed sometimes. Because, as I said, God doesn't make us. God asks us. Watch out for the moments. They're special. Can we say a prayer? Lord God, you are calling each of us in different ways, with different messages and different messengers for different service. Help us to be ready and able to listen when you call. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you all so much. you please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Call stories are always interesting in Scripture. There's, there's almost, um, how do I say it? There's, there's almost a, a format for call stories. Probably the most famous would be the call story of Moses, do people remember that story? It's Moses before the burning bush, and God is saying, hey, Moses, I've got something for you to do. And he's, he basically says, oh, no thank you. And God uh, continues to, to pester him, to push him, right? To say, uh, you know, I'll give you all the help you need. And he, Moses says, oh, I'm a terrible speaker. I can't, you've you got to ask somebody else. There's got to be better options out there. And he says, all right, fine, I'll give you Aaron, so you'll be okay. God, God is quite persistent, but doesn't it's, it's interesting to me, he doesn't get upset when Moses says no. Instead, he comforts him and says, it's going to be okay. I'll be there with you. I'll, I'll give you what you need. And we get the, these other call stories today, and we'll have more next week too, because these moments of call are important. They're important in Scripture. They're important in our lives. I suspect many of you have little moments of call in your life where you felt, well, the fact that you're here tells me that God whispered in your hearts at one time or another. Our faith grows when we accept those calls from God. It, it warms us, right? I do like the Methodist term there. They say strangely warmed, when the heart is strangely warmed. We, we feel that when we answer the call and we are emboldened to do things that we might not otherwise do. It's interesting to hear this story of Samuel because he was such a young I don't, we don't know exactly how old he was. I want to say young man, but maybe he was just a boy when this happened. 
it's, I think it's the only time in scripture that a child or, or someone just barely a, barely a child is ever called in the Bible. Usually it's adults. And that makes sense because in the ancient cultures, children had no standing, right? They had no place in society. They were barely people. So the fact that God calls a child might speak to God's desperation in that moment. He didn't have a lot of other options, but it could also just be that Samuel was ready to hear it. I don't know. But it must have been hard for Eli to hear that Samuel had received the call and he recognized that his was at an end. There's a transitional phrase or there's a transition there that's hard. Well, that would be hard for anyone, right? Sometimes we have to let go of what we were doing and allow others to take that place, especially because he knew he had, well, he'd failed. He hadn't held up his end of the bargain. And God said, I'm sorry, but you're going to suffer the consequences of your actions. You see, because Eli's sons had, well, they hadn't grown up well. And they had, well, not to go into a long story, but they'd messed up things in the temple. And people had lost faith because of them. They were just disgusted. That's the simple way to put it. I think in society, when we hear call stories, we usually hear call stories from sort of epic tales, right? People know the big stories. Um, you know, in society, I'm thinking Star Wars, right? We know Luke Skywalker, he was called to fight the Empire. Or more recently, I suppose, in some ways, was Frodo had to destroy the One Ring. You guys know that story of Lord of the Rings? Uh, yeah, it'd be odd if you didn't, I suppose. But those sort of big epic tales, sort of the Joseph Campbell stories of the epic hero who has to defeat evil, they tend to be very straightforward. They've got a simple, clear goal that they need to achieve. And that seems nice and comforting. Oh, life is simple. The problems are big, but once we achieve them, we're done. That's not usually how it works when God calls us to serve. Service is not something that's a one and done, but it's a a way of being, a part of our life. It becomes part of who we are when we're called to serve. It's a little more complicated than just fighting evil. We don't just get to blow something up and be done, right? In fact... The people who have answered calls, that's clergy, that's individuals, that's, you know, people like Mother Teresa. It becomes their whole lives. And it doesn't have to be something where you wear a a funny robe. It can be something in life. People who serve the poor, who feed the hungry, who, well, I know there's people right now who are serving at the warming station, trying to keep people warm this very minute. Those moments of call help. They transform lives, and they mean all the difference to others. Maybe you've been called for one thing or another. And I I worry. I worry that you, you think I'm giving you a hard time. I am not. This is not me saying, shouldn't you be doing more? Because anytime clergy talks about things like this, a lot of people jump to that. This is not a, a guilt trip. I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is keeping you alert for those moments of call. Because it can change, it can grow, it can transform, and it can change your hearts. Be open to that possibility, because when our hearts are changed, we are indeed strangely warmed. We are more than we were before in ways that's hard to articulate until it happens. We see this throughout scripture, of course. Samuel became a very important prophet. He anointed the kings, first Saul which didn't work out too well, but then eventually David, right? And then there's the disciples. Ah, the sweet, poor disciples who did not know what they were getting into. God called each of them. And in John's gospel, it's such a dramatic, abrupt call. He just says, hey, we're going. And they come. I kind of like that. And I think I've said before, but I suspect this is not the first conversation about this great task that they are embarking upon. He probably prepared them. It's a small town. They would have known each other, generally speaking. But the fact that they were waiting for the call, waiting for the moment when they had to get up and leave, tells me volumes about how excited they were. Even though they didn't really understand what they were getting into, right? They didn't understand that this would change their lives, change the entire world. And that's how it is when we get involved in the missions God sets before us. It often seems small to begin with. Oh, I'll just donate some coats, or I'll I'll go down and volunteer at the local, I don't know, bargain counter, or, or church, or whatever it is. It tends to start small, but opportunities open up to us, and we change lives when we participate. I suspect many of you have been changed at one time or another when you've offered a little help, and you thought, oh, this is nothing. 
but to the person who received that help, oh boy, it meant the entire world. I can't tell you how many people have come in these doors and I've just offered, you know, a bag of food because we've got so many wonderful people who are helping to make that possible. I get the credit, but they did all the work, right? But to them, that is a precious gift. When to me it was ah, five minutes of grabbing some stuff, right? That's how the call of God works sometimes. Quiet, easy, but also life-changing. At other times, ooh, it's hard, right? It's hard. It's hard to walk alongside people who are in the midst of addiction or grief or loss or pain, anxiety and fear, depression. These are burdens that are hard to carry. And sometimes I struggle myself when I see other people going through that. That's what compassion and empathy and love do for us. We share pain. But because it's shared, I know it's a little lighter for each of us. Where is God calling you today? What moments are you available for? As I said to the kids, it's okay to say no to God. That's a hard thing for me to say as a minister, to be honest. It's hard for me to say, it's okay to say no, because I don't want you to, <laughs> right? I want you to accept as often and as enthusiastically as possible, because I know God is giving you an opportunity, giving me an opportunity, but sometimes you just can't, right? The nice thing is God is willing to ask again, willing to keep trying, willing to reach out to our hearts and encourage us in ways we don't expect. I know that silly story about the wasp flying around seems silly, and it is. But who knows? Maybe those little wing beats meant something to someone and nudged their hearts in the right direction. I'm sure you've all heard of the butterfly effect. That works in God's favor, too. On a cold day like this, it's easy to, it's easy to say, let's just stay home and warm, right? And I want you to, don't get me wrong. But it becomes easier and easier to say not today, too. That's part of the problem. When God calls, if we get in the habit of saying not today, I'll try again tomorrow, it becomes always tomorrow and never today. Don't let that happen. Don't miss the opportunities. Don't expect something amazing to happen when you say yes. And I'll leave it at that. Amen. All right, let's sing our hymn of the day together, if you'd please rise. So
Let us pray. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation. God of fig trees and fertile soil, heal areas of the world harmed by human greed, restore those recovering from natural disaster, protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and it uplifts those on the margins of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle. God of compassion, you know our inner hearts. Be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. For whom else do the people of God pray? God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think we're going to give the offering a miss today. If you brought an offering, God, well, should we do it? There's not too many of us. All right, we're going to just sing the song. Let's sing together. <laughs> if you'd please rise as you're able.
If you did bring an offering today, I'll have the box available at the end of the service. Thank you for your faithful giving. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in, the name we pr- in whose name we pray. Amen. We continue now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right right to to give give our thanks thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Gracious God, you call each of us in our hearts in one way or another, just as you called the disciples and so many before us. In this meal, you call us still. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let's pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Here at Peace Lutheran Church, all people, of course, are welcome at the Lord's table. So I will invite you to come forward as soon as it is prepared. If I could get all my helpers to come up, that would be great.
change my heart, oh God. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all, and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you please rise now for the blessing and dismissal. God, who names you, Christ, who claims you, and the Holy Spirit, who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together now our sending song. We are marching in the light of God. Go in peace, you are God's beloved. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.